Chapter 1. Welcome to Thedas, Part 2. Dragon Age, The World of Thedas, Volume 1. Summary of Audiobook, Part 2. A Brief History of Thedas and the Exalted Marches. A Brief History of Thedas. Over the course of human history, five blights have threatened to destroy Thedas. The earliest known points of Thedasian history are documented in partial texts and old stories that only hint at the reality of these ancient times. Dalish Keepers and the Dwarven Shaperit speak of a Thedas entirely devoid of humans, a time when elves reigned over the land, and dwarves ruled the underground. When humans came, everything is said to have changed. What peace may or may not have existed gave way to all out war, and humans nearly destroyed the elves with the rise of the Tevinter Imperium. This first human empire and its worship of the old gods spread across Thedas. The elves either fled to the far reaches of the continent or were enslaved. The might of the Tevinter Magocracy was unquestioned for generations until the Blight. Prevailing knowledge teaches that the unchecked power of the Tevinter Magister specifically, their attempt to touch the realm of the gods triggered this threat to all living things. This sin corrupted the Magisters who entered the Fade, returning them to the waking world as the first dark spawn. The old gods they met in the Fade were likewise cast out and locked away underground. The dark spawn twisted creatures of singular purpose, sought to unearth the trapped old gods. The first to wake was Dumat, who took the form of a blighted high dragon known as an archdemon. He led the darkspawn to the surface, taking an unspeakable toll on the dwarves before terrorizing the humans and elves. Dumat brought humanity to the brink of destruction before a newly formed order known as the Grey Wardens managed to defeat the archdemon and end his blight. The first blight lasted 100 years, greatly weakening the Imperium when the Prophet Andres led an army of barbarians to attack from the south, the Imperium no longer had the strength to defend itself. Andres proclaimed that magic must serve humanity rather than rule over it, a direct challenge to the Tevinter way of life. Railing against the Imperial Magisters, Andres called the old gods lies and blamed their worship for the blight. Her teaching spread quickly and much of the Imperium crumbled before her armies. When Andres burned at the stake, her martyrdom only fueled faith in her cult of the Maker. At the start of the Divine Age, another old god awoke and a second blight began. Emperor Draken, of the new nation of Orly, became humanity's defender. As he pushed back the darkspawn hordes with his armies, his own power grew, and with it, the influence of the chantry he created in the name of Andres. Draken enlisted mages, who eventually formed the Circle of Magi. They harnessed their magic to smite the Darkspawn, and, alongside the Grey Wardens, killed the Archdemon. The Second Blight was over. It was during these troubled times that the influence of the Chantry spread and solidified across much of Thedas. The religious body, which preached Andraste's chant of light and worship of the Maker, became so powerful that even the Imperium converted, although they would later split to form the Imperial Chantry over differing interpretations of magic's role in society. Over the ages, three more blights ignited and threatened the surface world, only to be stopped with aid from the Wardens. In between blights, the schism between the Chantry and the Imperial Chantry led to a series of conflicts between Orly and the Imperium. Their warring accomplished little for either power, and was put aside with the landing of a mysterious new race who called themselves the Quinari. The Horned Giants, who follow a strange set of rigid ideals, sought to convert Thedas to their way of life. They possessed superior technology, and in a great war, cut into the heart of Thedas. Together, the human nations of Thedas pushed the Quinari back to the continent's fringes, forcing a fragile peace between the Chantry and the Quinari that has persisted for two ages. Only the Imperium would not relent, and tensions with the Quinari persist there. By the time the Fifth Blight struck in the early years of the Dragon Age, it had been generations since they had faced an archdemon. The Warden ranks were considerably thinner as respect waned. Somehow, two young Wardens and a united failed and beat impossible odds to kill the new archdemon and stop the Fifth Blight from spreading across the continent. In the Free Marches in Orly, meanwhile, Tensions between the Circle of Magi and the Chantry Arm of Authority known as the Templars were coming to a head. Shortly after the end of the Fifth Blight, 
an apostate mage destroyed a chantry temple in Kirkwall. Further unrest in the Orosian capital of Val Royo led to a battle in the city circle between Templars and high-ranking mages. When it was revealed that the Divine, head of the Chantry, had all but supported the mages in this conflict, many Templars and seekers severed ties with the Chantry, spelling an uncertain future for all. History of the Exalted Marches An Exalted March is a call to arms declared by the ruling Divine. It is named for Andraste's exalted march on to winter. Although Chantry faithful have not historically been forced to fight, there has been significant pressure to join past marches, for fear of otherwise being branded a traitor to the faith. Exalted March of the Dales 2. 10-2. 20 Glory The exalted march of the Dales began in 2. 10 Glory after the elves of the Dales captured the Orlesian city of Montsemard and marched on Val Roy O. The Chantry called for war against the elves. It became known as the Exalted March of the Dales. Orly was the only nation to provide troops. Despite considerable elven victories, the elven capital of Hallamshire was conquered and the Dales were crushed. The Orlesians uprooted elven settlements and forced the elves into human settlements or a nomadic life. The elven nomads came to be known as the Dalish. Exalted March on Stark Haven. 2. 80 Glory. In 2. 15 Glory, Stark Haven's King Furus, with backing from Tivinter allies, attempted to invade the rest of the Free Marches. Furus failed to conquer any neighbouring city states, despite launching multiple campaigns over several decades. Eventually, the Imperium took matters into its own hands removing Furus from power and taking Stark Haven for itself. Suddenly, Stark Haven was everyone's problem. The Chantry called an exalted march into 80 glory to free Stark Haven from its Tivin to invaders, and Stark Haven regained its independence following a short but bloody battle. Exalted marches on the Tivin to Imperium 4 40 black to 5 10 exalted In all Four exalted marches were called in the Imperium. The Chantry was so focused on the marches that they named an entire age after them. In 4. 40 Black, the Chantry called the first march to combat the magic-friendly nation's perceived Hellenism. Over many years and three more marches, Chantry, backed forces made it well into Imperium land. But they fell short of conquering the seemingly impregnable capital of Minritus. In the end, the marches did little more than solidify the ideological divide between the two nations. The exalted marches on the Imperium ended with the beginning of the Fourth Blight. The new exalted marches. 7. 25-7. 84 Storm. This series of three marches on the Quinari began after they landed in Thedas and swept across the continent in a bid for expansion of borders and influence. The period was significant in that it saw the many nations of Thedas, including the Imperium, working together to repel a common threat that wasn't a blight. The Imperial Chantry dispatched troops to retake Seheron, while Andrastian Chantry forces focused on freeing Rivain. The second march was called in seven. Fifty-two storm and ended in disaster. Chantry forces were pushed back and the Quinari captured most of Antiva. The Quinari weren't finished. They sailed south on the Amaranthine to Ostwick. The plan was to overwhelm the marcher cities of Stark Haven and Kirkwall, Stark Haven to block the roads leading north, and Kirkwall to block ships on the waking sea coming from Orly, all in an effort to deny supplies to the Thedas armies assaulting Rivain. Brother Ferdinand Junitivi wrote, The attack on Stark Haven eventually failed. But Kirkwall was attacked in a daring night raid where the Quinari used their leashed saw a reb as mages in an unprecedented display of sorcery. The walls were torn down and the city was taken, and for the next four years, Kirkwall endured the most brutal occupation in its history. A third exalted march was called, and a contingent led by an Orlesian chevalier named Sir Michel Laffey forced the Quinari out of Kirkwall. The march pushed in and the war turned in favour of the ruling Thurgians. By 7. 84 Storm, the third new exalted march on the Quinari ended. The Quinari maintained only one stronghold on the continent, the city of Contarum Rivain, 
but the cost of dislodging them was high. Much of northern Thetis was laid waste. The Lomian Accords were signed between the Quinari and every nation except Eventer, ushering in an uneasy peace. This only scrapes the surface of the continent's long, storied history. End of Seal Fandom Audiobook, Part 2 of Dragon Age The World of Thedas, Volume 1 Part 3 of this series will provide in great detail the calendar systems within Thedas and geography. Part 4 of this series will be the first installment of Chapter 2 Races, Human and Tribes Across Thedas A Chapter 1 bonus content audiobook is also available for your listening pleasure prior to Chapter 2. The bonus content audiobook includes Excerpts from the Botanical Compendium The excerpt from a lecture by Brother Junitivi at the University of Orly and a detailed timeline of important events in the world of Thedas that runs the length of Chapter 1. 